something unusual is happening to the Australian landscape. Well, a, a strange plastic tent, you know, something from outer space, parked in the middle of the paddock. The CIA has taken more than a passing interest. Devious science is involved. Now we're looking at different types of flanges and sleeves, what we call sleeves, that, that accentuates the heat so that uh, we can get a quicker kill. All this because something is bugging the cattle of Australia. This something, the buffalo fly. Swarming over the body of this unhappy beast are more than 2,000 of the bloodsuckers. They multiply very rapidly through the uh, dung and uh, unless you can deal with them, they just uh, uh, rub the cattle raw. The skin actually uh, uh, starts bleeding. They suck blood every hour or so during the day, which causes the cattle to go crazy, of course. It's a very badly irritating fly. Introduced to Australia, they're spread from the Northern Territory through Queensland and now into New South Wales. They've become one of the major pests in the cattle industry. Until now, the only strategy to control buffalo fly was chemical. Cattle need to be dipped or sprayed every couple of weeks. Nobody likes it. There are shipments of beef uh, to the US that have been uh, uh, knocked back because of uh, cypermethrin contamination, which is uh, one of the main chemical controls for buffalo fly. Cost and contamination aside, the other pressing problem is keeping one jump ahead of the fly's ability to develop immunity to the dip. Because of resistance, we've already had to move on to our third major chemical insecticide group, with some two dozen preparations currently battling it out on the market. It's time for a new approach. And it's come from two men called Bob. Bob's Tozer and Southerst work for the CSIRO's Division of Entomology. For three years, they've been developing an environmentally friendly answer to the buffalo fly. Their solution, an ingenious but unlikely looking contraption called the Bob's Trap. After a string of prototypes, they've found that the best way to catch buffalo fly is in one of these, a metal frame all flanged and hinged and covered in plastic, looking like a fluid-free Tupperware version of a car wash for cows. Extensive paddock trials in southern Queensland are already meeting with popular approval. But how on earth does something like this catch flies? Now suppose, just for a moment, suppose I was a cow covered in flies. I wouldn't be too sure why, but I'd know that by walking through this funny looking tent, I'd be getting some sort of relief. But if I was one of the flies, the story would be quite different. Everything would be fine until I actually got inside. Then horror of horrors, I'd see this great black shape. Now being a fly, I'd recognize that this was danger and I'd fly instinctively for the ceiling. As soon as I did that, my fate would be sealed. It's a flight of no return. Lured towards the light, the flies become trapped between the two layers of a false ceiling. Here, heated by the sun, the air is hot and dry. Death is inescapable. And if that wasn't enough, any flies that had had their eyes shut on the other side or had simply clung on for dear life would only get this far before these stiff bristles would simply flick them off. There are no chemicals, no labour, and about the only part that moves is the cow. An unexpected design feature is that nature's housekeepers, ants, quickly take up residence to do all the cleaning. As you can see, uh, this animal has about two to two and a half thousand flies. Uh, it usually takes uh, a, 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 about uh, four to six weeks for an animal to become accustomed to the trap. 
Uh, once they become accustomed, they uh, use it very, very easily and uh, will return to it when they have a, a fly burden that causes them irritation. With these, every fly that gets in the actual apparatus uh, is, is, is captured and cannot escape and, and is killed. Therefore, you get around uh, the build-up of resistance to things like chemicals. Uh, it's therefore sustainable. It, uh, it is going to last forever. South America has got a fly problem. Uh, Japan has got the problem. Uh, so a lot of those places have got far more cattle than we have, and they'll jump at this, I'm sure. Wherever there is an international problem, the CIA is never far away. But this time, the CIA is going to the USA. Country Industries of Australia, the Brisbane-based company building the trap, is gearing up for export. And the market is huge. Bigger than Ben Hur. The amount of chemicals that are put on cattle throughout the world is enormous. Now, this should, by rights, take the place of that. So, so as far as I'm concerned, there is no limit. Cows and customers are already queuing up for the bob's trap, and no wonder. Every movement, every flick or twitch a beast makes to dislodge flies costs energy. Meat production drops, milk production drops. But every pass through the trap is instant relief and improved profits. The brainwave on this has come from the scientific side, but there is a push from our side to, uh, to get away from the chemicals. There are some environmentalists in the farming sector too. Probably by the end of the decade, these traps will become part of the Australian landscape. A landscape of windmills and bobs traps and contented cows. Mm. 